All right. How are you guys doing today? Good? So we're on the very end of Seagraph here, and I'm going to talk to you guys a bit about materials. And it's a bit of an introduction, so if you're not familiar with it, this should be very helpful to you and the best pipeline uh, practices that you can do for materials. Let me open up my PowerPoint here. Sorry, we're falling a bit behind. Uh, no, what? So let's talk about the workflow for PBR materials. And one question is going to be like, what is PBR? It's physically based rendering that we've worked with and developed with, an Unre with Unreal. And you'll see many other software packages go in that route and work in those particular pipelines. Is what it is, it's a combination of a material. You're going to be using your texture, the material nodes. You're going to be using lighting. It's all those things combined together to make your eye believe that this object is like it is in the real world. That's pretty much what it is, physically based rendering. So some of the rules that it has to uh, go by, but oh, before I do that, I should introduce myself. I'm trying to make sure I get enough time because we're uh, falling a little bit behind there. So my name is Sean Spitzer. I've been teaching and uh, working in the industry for like 20 years. Uh, the teaching part's a little shorter than that. Um, also, I uh, worked with several engine companies and this one is my favorite, as you can tell. And uh, I, work, I teach out in the LA office uh, out here, the teaching education portal that we have. And we'll talk about that later on, opportunities if you guys live in the area, you guys can take some of our courses and get some training in Unreal. So material principles, let's talk about that. Real world applications and breakdown. So if you look at metallic in general, the grayscale value on or off, you got a zero or one, and one being highly specular. So you can actually crank that up, get like super T2 metal, you know, and so forth. And, ra and roughness, if you look at grayscale values, they range from zero to one and should be texture driven. Now you can literally put a number in that in Unreal's material editor, or you can use a texture which is more ideal. And I'll show you how to do that, where you can plug that in and visually you get a better representation. And a lot of these softwares, the 3D ones, such as Substance and 3D Code, you can paint those variables in there. You can paint that roughness in there to get what you want. And they also use smart materials to push that even more forward. And smart materials being that it, uh, you, you can you can dunk it, you can paint it, and you'll actually get something that's like the real world that's already predefined for you. So in Unreal, what we're going to do is going to build a node system for that, and I'm going to show you how using the material editor, how we can build those nodes and just pull those executions across and apply that, and then from there, we're going to start talking about master materials and instance materials, which is super important when it comes to Unreal and what that concept means. So the, one, the things that we're going to be uh, focusing on, let me get a drink of water so I don't lose my voice at the end of Seagraph. Our core nodes we're going to be looking at is Diffuse. Um, uh, we have uh, abbreviations there, Albedo, AKA, Metallic, Roughness, and normal. And you'll notice in my little slide here, we have specular set to 0 0.5. That's a good default. Now specular, everything in the real world is going to have some sort of light bouncing off of it. But we want to, again, push our, spec our, push our shininess, our material identification of how that's being reacted to light. We want to do that through our roughness, and you want to do that a lot of times through texture. I just have a node in here just to show you that not only can I bring it through a color or texture, I can actually plug in a thing called a constant, which we're going to look at to push that strength of that object. So let's go and set it up real quick, and I'm going to show you a little navigation in the material editor. Grab this guy. And let's open up my material node. So you can see an initial breakdown here how to do this. And I'm going to show you how to set these up and how these work. So let's go and grab our textures and make a new material. So to make a material in Unreal, I can right click in a thing called a constant browser down here. This gives me a list off to the left, which kind of looks like a little outliner. And then over here, I can actually right click in the content browser. I'm in my mud sand folder. And I can go in here and create a new material right here. And we'll call this last day sand underscore M for the master materials. This is my last day sand. You see, I have a multiple collection of sands. I love sand. We're near southern, or actually near the beach. We're in Southern California. 
So sand topic it is. All right, so we got sand here all set up. Let's go and double click on them. Now you'll see in the details panel off to the right, I've made this, uh, any material that I select is gonna show up with the details in the scene. So if I select this chair, we're gonna get his material info and all the other stuff. But we have a new material that we're gonna double click on. And this is gonna bring up our material editor here. A little, little material graph. And uh, <clears throat> let me get some water so I don't lose all my vocal cords. There we go. So we're now going to drag in our texture. There's a couple ways you can bring it into your editor here. And I'm working with one monitor, so I'll try to keep this a little bit squished so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll open it in just a second. Um, one way we can do it is I can grab my albedo and keep my finger on the T key. This is the hot key for that in the editor. And I can left click and it will bring in that texture. Another way you can do it, and we'll bring in our uh, normal and our roughness. I'll grab these, control click, and just drag them into the editor itself. There we go. So we also have an AO. So just for fun, I'll bring him in there. I think I left him behind. So let's go ahead and go to a full screen. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a workflow here to keep things organized, because it's easy to get confused if your material gets really heavy and really huge. One thing we're going to do is drag our execution strings, our RGB, which is a collection of all these other nodes, we're going to drag him over into our base color. Now, I don't know if you caught that for a minute. When I pulled this over, you'll notice if I let go, I get a topic list that I could choose from different nodes that do different things. Oh my gosh, look at it. They're all here. Holy cow. Don't let this intimidate you, but this is great because at, at Unreal, what we want to do is make you drunk with power. We want you to be able to build whatever you want, whatever you need, and we have a list of nodes here to be able to pull from. Quick water break. I feel like I'm running a marathon. Somebody hands me a water. Just, ah, just keep going. All right, so we got the uh, base texture set in. Let's go ahead and pull this guy over. Let's get our roughness in place. I'm going to pull the execution string for that. Pull them in roughness. Now, specular, I don't want it to look like the T1000. So I'm going to go in here and use a node called a constant. And this is, works like a, a little variable we can punch in, and you can control how strong things are going to be and not be. So I'm going to go ahead and keep my finger on the one key and left click. There's a constant there. It's at zero. Punch it in the specular. And you can see automatically it flattens our sand. But our sand's kind of wet, right? So we can do a half variable and let our roughness push everything to where it needs to be. So I'm going to do a 0.5. And then from there, we're going to do a little AO. So let me pull this over for a second, grab the AO. And I'm going to grab that execution string, this little, uh, I, I call it execution string. It's a habit from Blueprint. Um, we, can just, we can just keep that route. So we just pull that guy right into the ambient occlusion. And then we have a normal map, which is going to give us a little bit more detail, an optical illusion based on our normal and RGB information. Pull that in there. And then we got a little wet sand, a little silicon-based shininess going on there. And we're going to hit apply. Now, you've got to hit apply when you work with this. Now, the cool thing about these materials, and I'll briefly talk about this, and I want to talk about organization. These materials here, here is the main driving material that we're plugging all these other nodes into. And in here, you can define what kind of material you're working with. If it's a clear coat, if it's a uh, subsurface type of object like skin or plants, you can play with that there. It's really nice to be able to do that. And you also, if it's a thin polygon object, such as like a plane, you might, you, it depends where angle you're looking at it, but you really do want to turn on two-sided just in case someone walks around your thin object. So there's a lot of few cool things you can do. There's like translucency that can be complementary with your subsurface, depending on what your material and object is. And you also have usage control, as well as you go down if you want to get really super fancy, which we, if we have time, we might. You can actually go into your displacement map, and you can actually make it look like sand is pushed off the surface, uh, as in raised on that actual surface. So we got this all set up. I'll just hit apply again, because it thinks I'm doing something, and I'm not yet. But let's talk a bit about organization real quick. There's a couple ways to organize things, and I like to do this in Unreal as much as possible, especially when my materials are getting super complicated. There's one way you can actually go in here and leave notes 
for yourself or even tag an object for what you want it to be or what you want it to be represented or even work that needs to be done on it. I can call this guy, you know, the uh, diffuse. If someone is confused, then maybe we can call this the prime diffuse. So if we, maybe you have multiple different nodes all over the place and you're like, hey, oh, this is the one I started out with. I want to keep note of that. And you can pin it so when you scale away, it stays big or you can just unpin it and it's still in that variable there. Now, if you want to keep it a bit more organized even then, we can go in here and say, hey, all right, so this is my specular. And we can say shininess. We can set this category as shininess. I can highlight them, hit the C key, and I can create a comment for it. And we'll call this shiny stuff of justice right there. There we go. So that keeps things organized for you. And when you move it around, it's going to connect, connect and hold all those nodes for you, which is really nice. And if you're like, oh, crap, I, was, I had a little too much two inch to drink that night, or I was too tired, and I put it in the wrong spot, you can take it out. And then there you go. You can actually eliminate it and take it out there. There you go. Pretty sweet. So you're keeping things organized. And then if you don't want it, you can kill it, and it doesn't affect your other nodes that are in that spot. Pretty, pretty cool. So now that we have this, let's go and apply it to an object. I already have one in the scene. You can say ding, out of the oven kind of thing. But I'm going to actually make a new object. We're going to do um, an alt and move here to just quickly duplicate that item. And we're going to hit apply on that material we just made. Last day sand. And we'll apply it to this guy by simply dragging it on that object. Pretty nice. There we go. Got it on that object. And we'll avoid the bloom. So we'll actually raise our camera here so we don't get so much bloom and a good representation. I haven't turned my lights to default at this time. So one of the things I want to talk about also when it comes to lights there's a thing that we call making master instances and making a master material and the instances that work with it. This is super important concept when it comes to Unreal. If you've ever messed with Unreal and looked at it, maybe you've opened up a cool scene you got at the marketplace, something that was free, you'll see, oh man, why is it compiling like a bazillion shaders? Sometimes you will get ones that are pretty heavy and you can't help it. It's kind of in that nature. But when you're working with your stuff, and ideally in a scene that you open, you want to be able to try to limit that compiling as much as possible. Because it's heavy. It makes a scene big. It's the light reacting to these materials. You have all these complicated materials. You want to make a master material. And from that master material, you want to make a thing called instance materials. So what happens is Unreal looks at the master material, only compiles that material, cal calculates its information on that material one time. And then all the other instance materials from it is free. They don't cost anything. They don't have to be compiled. And that's the workflow you really want to have when it comes to materials. So when you have a big scene, you can have it. So I have, I have like four, or maybe 10 even, master materials. But you have a ton, a ton of other instance materials derived off of those materials. They could be your prime, and then the other ones could be like the children. And again, it's for faster compiling, and it's referencing it, and it actually really is efficient. So let's go ahead and make that. And there are a couple ways you can do it. One, I can go in here. I can right click and pull up parameter nodes, like a texture parameter node and so forth. But if you've inherited a file scene, you can also do what I did, where you're dragging the texture or it's already connected. You can right click and you say convert to a parameter. And we'll call this guy real quick, underscore, diffuse, param. And if we wanted to control its color, we can actually add a color in there. I'm going to leave it as it is right now because I'll show you some of that later. Um, say we got a normal. But we want to be able to control maybe the strength of the normal. One thing you can do is we can use a node called a multiply. And then you can type it in for a search. Or you can use a hotkey where you keep your finger on the M and you right click and there's your multiply. The hotkey for a constant, which you saw me make this bad boy earlier, Keep your finger on one. And then you can, did I say right click? Left click, sorry about that. Left click, right and left. Get it mixed up a little bit sometimes, especially at the end of the day. So now I can go in here and connect my normal map into the B channel and then my constant node into the A channel. 
and I can connect it to my normal map. Now, when you do this, you'll notice it gets flat. Don't panic, because we're going to open up the variable he variables here so that we can control how strong that's going to be. So let's convert the other ones. Every time you use a constant, water, every time you use a constant, you have to actually convert him too. We won't be converting any of these guys here that act like Photoshop filters, but we will be doing it to these little constant guys. And we'll call this guy spec param. We'll convert this guy here, which is our roughness. We'll call this rough. I'll just do underscore R because I'm running out of time. We'll call this underscore N for normal map. Normally, I'll just put normal map strength. And convert this parameter. And we'll call this guy norm underscore map, the actual guy. And then we have the AO. I don't have to worry about the AO, so I'm not going to worry about that guy right now because I don't have a one to swap out right now for that. So we hit apply. So now that we've done this, we do want to make sure whenever you convert any of your constants, you want to be act actually create a default. And on this default, I'm going to do one. You're going to see that material go back to normal. On the spec side, actually, it's two, let's keep it 0.5. We want to keep it, let's keep it low. That'll be our default. And then we can control the, uh, maybe the max will be one. If you want it to be like the Terminator, make it shiny, we can do that later. And then now, over here, we want to be able to control his default. Now, you're going to see this guy go back to normal. Sorry, kind of rushing through, so make sure I don't hold you too long as everybody starts to leave and get food and beer. I don't want to hold you from your beer. So we go in here, we got the slider max. We'll do like maybe five right there. So that's actually these constants that I've created makes it so that when I make my instance, I can go back and punch in these numbers and change these variables on the instance. So we're opening up these variables so that we have full control so we can, in our instance, from this master, do amazing things. I'm going to hit apply. Now that we got those all set in, let's make an instance material from that uh, master material by right-clicking, and we're going to create instance material. And I'll just hit enter. I'm going to drag him over here. And there's a, a really cool stuff that we can do now. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And we can control this material. As you see, as I double click on the material node that's representing what's on that surface, you'll notice the interface looks totally different, right? We don't no longer have a graph because we don't really need to compile anything. We can now change whatever we want. I can open up these parameters that I created. I can mess over here with our scalar parameter here for our values for the normal and the spec. So if I want a stronger normal, I can increase that. And my spec, if I want to, I can go higher so it gets shinier. See that right there? So you can actually make almost a different material. I can go flat with the normal, go higher with it. And I can even add some more multiplies to it. Let me set that back to default. That's a nice thing about Unreal. If you don't like it, you can set it back the way it was. It's fantastic. So now watch this. We have a sand material. We made an instance of that sand material. He can be changed. You notice the parent's not being affected. We're going to import a brick texture real quick. And we're just going to swap it out. So I'm going to grab the diffuse for this brick that I already have imported. I'm going to click on that arrow and use the brick. I'm going to grab the normal, select that normal, use the normal. So we now swapped out the normal. Now it's got the shininess going on, right? So let's actually swap out our roughness. I'll select the roughness node we have, grab this here. Let's use that roughness. And if we want to lower that spec that I was messing with earlier, we can do so. We can make it so it's totally flat, like actual brick. Didn't have to recompile, completely free, the same material with a new texture placed on top of it. And you can ac actually make a bunch of these, and you don't have to recompile that. He's the new guy on the block. Just kind of like it's blocks, but that's a bad joke. 
anyway, but you can see that it's there and you actually made a new one and you didn't have to recompile that bad boy. So start wrapping it up. Okay, so now let's talk about some uh, training here. So you can see that it's got the same concepts here. If you want to take a picture of this, talking about swapping it out, all your materials, keeping things reasonable. And again, all these guys were from the marketplace. If you have any more questions, feel free to uh, email me, sean.spitzer at epicgames.com. And we have an online portal. If you go to our online training, you can actually earn a badge and level up and be even more XP-ish, if that's a word. I just made it up. There you go. And then you go down here, and you can see our LA team here. So we again, we have classes out here in LA. If you guys are interested in taking these classes, please send me an email, and I will get things rolling for you so that you can be a part of that. All right, and there's the awesome futuristic code for your futuristic phones to take pictures of and have that data ready to go. That's about it. I hope you guys had a great week at Seagraph, and right on.